So last week we had our first official live workshop at the Intercontinental downtown Miami and it went phenomenal. Today we're gonna show you some clips from the workshop. It was basically an introduction to trading. So this is definitely for new traders. If you're a new trader, you will be interested in this video. We cover everything from trading view to candlesticks, the basics of support and resistance, some of our favorite chart patterns, the intro to technical analysis, and of course, the importance of a trading plan. So stay tuned guys, you don't wanna miss this. So who's ever had the idea to start trading and then they saw something like this and instantly decided to retire from trading the same, at the same time. Exactly. Trust me, I, I'm putting my hand up too because I had the same thought. The first time I was introduced to trading was probably around 2000, honestly 2010, 11. And I looked at something like this and I was like, yeah, no, uh, this is not for me. Usually, uh, most trading goes something like this. You know, most people trade based on what other people say. So this, I think this is a picture that perfectly represents what a lot of trading is, what a lot of the market is. As you can see there, the guy in the front says, I've got a stock here that could really excel. Then the next guy says, really excel? The guy says, excel? The next guy says, sell? And everybody starts screaming, sell. And they just start selling because they heard wrong. Then on the bottom here, you can see that a uh, guy here says, this is madness, I can't take it anymore. So the next guy says, goodbye. The next guy says, goodbye. So the next guy says, bye. And everybody just starts screaming, bye. And everybody starts buying. That breaks down mostly what trading is. A lot of trading is people mishearing things or listening to the wrong, the misinformation and making decisions based on that, as you can see there. Um, just by looking at it, because it, it becomes like reading a book. You just look at it, you read it, and you're like, okay, I know what's going on. So the way I like to do it, I like to do what's called a top-down analysis. For a top-down analysis, you start at a monthly, at the monthly chart. Now, what, when you when you start speaking in time frames, you guys see each candle there. You see green candle and red candle, right? Each candle represents a moment in time. So, when I'm saying monthly time frame, that means that each candle there represents one month. Okay, every single candle represents one entire month. So, when you look at a monthly time frame, that shows you what I like to call the big picture. You have to know what the big picture is before you start to zoom in. If you don't understand the bigger picture and you only trade on smaller time frames where, where it's very zoomed in, then you can't really tell what's going on. So I always start at the, at the monthly chart. So it's green, it's bullish, it's red, it's bearish. So now here, you see the lines, right? So what each line represents, these are called shadows, tails, or wicks, okay? What these lines represent the top of that line represents the highest price during the time period. So if you're in a daily chart and you see a line going up, that represents the highest price during that time period that it went. And then the same thing on the bottom, the line on the bottom represents the lowest price that it went during that time period. The fat part is the opening and closing price. The lines represent the highest the price went during that period of time. Did that answer your question? Perfect. Technical analysis use support and resistance levels to identify price points on a chart where the probabilities favor a pause, okay, or reversal of a trend. Okay, so that might sound a little bit complicated. It's, it's really not. It, it, once I break it down, you'll see how simple it is. So let's talk about the support first, okay? So support occurs when a downtrend is expected to pause due to a lot of demand, okay? So let's talk about that first. The support is when a price is expected to pause due to a lot of demand. Now, how do you know where a support is? So 
So when trading, you always have to refer back in history. That's what trading is all about, the data that you already have from before. What's happened before at similar price points. That's what traders go off of. So if you look here, where it currently is right now, and you look back, this is back in March, and you continue back, this is, is still in March, March, uh, February. So this could be, you could say here, looking at the, these levels, it's like, all right, it looks like there is a lot of price action anytime it got to this area right here, right? Let me see if I could uh, highlight these for you. So look right here. We get this one, we get this one, this one, and now the most recent one. This is live right now. This one right here. This is the most recent chart. I'm sorry for the terrible circles. So you guys, do you guys see something similar with all these circles? Yeah. There's a line there, right? You could basically draw a line through every single one of these circles. Now, this is called a trend line. A trend line is a dynamic support or resistance zone. So the same way that the flat line works as a support and resistance zone, you see there's a lot of price action, buying and selling. Trend lines, which are dynamic support and resistance zones, work the same exact way. You always have to be watching those levels because those are, if, they're, if it's a resistance like that, that's a sell, that means you gotta sell it. So if you buy here, Let's say you bought this right here, this circle right here, this little breakout. As soon as it got up, this is, would have been the key area to sell that, right? But let's say you didn't sell there, and it went back down, and you saw the support here, and then it started going back up, this is the third touch. So you've already seen, if you would have drawn this line, you would have noticed, if you look at the chart, you would have noticed, okay, there's a trend, this is a, a high, this is called a high, there's a higher high, and this is a higher high. But every time it touches this area, it gets rejected back down. So if you would have been able to identify this, you would have been able to sell while the price was still up there up high. And you would have been able to buy in back in right now. Where the price is at where? Where's the price right now? Support. Support. It's at a support. So support is where you want to buy. You want to buy low, you want to sell high. What a lot of new traders do, they do the opposite way. They buy high when there's a lot of hype around it, right? When there's a lot of greed, and they sell low when there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of panic in the market. Because that's just your natural emotions teach you and tell you to do that. You know, that's a natural emotion. Trading is all about discipline. Discipline is the number one thing when it comes to trading. If you're not disciplined, you're gonna you're gonna buy when it's hyped up when there's a lot of greed in the market, and you're gonna sell right now because you're, you're scared, you're losing money. People are down right now, you're down. If you put a lot of money in, you're down thousands of dollars in the last week, right? I'm down six figures in the last week, and I'm chilling. I've been, I've been around for too long. That's what we call the runner strategy. What the fuck is that? Oh, my whole position. So let's say I have $1,000. When it goes up to a certain number that I like, I'm taking 25% off, it's 250. Goes up, when I think, I'm like, okay, I wanna take profit here, it's 250 more. Goes up a little bit more, I'm like, all right, I'm taking 250 here. So now I have 250 left, 25%. I'm gonna let that ride out as long as I can. I'm gonna set up a, a trailing stop, usually. What I do is trailing stops, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. But I'll set up a trailing stop and let it try to let it ride out for as long as possible because I want to maximize my profits. In trading, you always want to minimize your losses. You do that using stop losses. And you want to maximize your profits. You do that by doing this, what I'm saying. You take profits on, you know, as you go up, you're taking profits, then you leave 25% left to ride it out as long as you can. You gotta know where you're coming, you're going out of the trade, whether you're right or you're wrong. You always have to know when you're coming out of the trade. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong, you gotta know when. The next thing is your position size. You have to know how much you're risking. There's something called a 5% rule. That means that you never risk more than 5% of your trading capital on any one trade. Now 5%, that doesn't mean that your trade, that if you have $1,000, you can't have more than 
0.5% of it in the trade. That means that if you lose on that trade, you're the maximum that you can lose of your trading capital is 5%. That's what the 5% rule is. And 5% is on the high end. This is like if, if like um, Jeff Bezos just told me that he was coming out with something new, like he does every week, to buy at Amazon. Then I'm like, all right, I'm risking 5%. Other than that, you should be 3% and below. 5% is just the high end of that. Does that mean every trade should be 5%? You should be 3% if you're confident and below that for most of your trades. And then the way that you go into position size, you gotta, you gotta be able to calculate your position size. And the way you calculate it, I have a video on this, is your position size equals your risk amount divided by the distance to your stop loss. This is why you need to know your entry and your exits. Because if you don't know your entry and your exit, you don't know how to position size correctly. If you don't know how to position size correctly, you're gonna, you're gonna risk the wrong amount, and you're probably gonna go broke because you're gonna risk too much. If you have a small account especially, you're gonna blow up your account, and you're not gonna be able to trade it. You're gonna have to make another deposit. There's nothing worse, I'm telling you from experience, the worst feeling in the world is having to deposit more money into your account because you lost it all. Worst feeling. The worst feeling. It makes you not want to trade no more when you have to do it again. Yep. And then, yeah, and then you go on what they call it, go on tilt. You try to revenge trade to make your money back, and you do even worse. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to I want to spend the last few minutes on Q and A. Anybody got any questions? Yeah. So I was saying, you want to trade. So you want to buy. Yeah, right. How do you split it? Yeah, so, yeah, so the way I do it, and it's, it's all different for everybody, I'm usually holding, I hold about 75%, I want to say, of my account, and this changes, but I hold about 75%, I trade actively about 10%. So 10% of my account is to trade. 75%, I'm not touching it. The other, the other percent, it could be uh, sometimes I could have like 10% in uh, liquidity, just waiting for a dip to happen. When the dip happens, I put it into the market. You know, or I could have it for, for other, other things. So it just depends what you prefer. But I would recommend for trading, especially if you knew, you should be using less than 10% of your entire portfolio. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, so Coinbase, if you're using regular Coinbase, they charge a lot of fees for trading. So I, I, if you want to stick with Coinbase, there's something called Coinbase Pro that you can, you can use. The fees are a little bit better. Uh, there's also Binance. Binance, uh, if you haven't used it, they have a lot more options to things to trade. So there are two different options that you can use. Uh, for Binance, you have to go to Binance US, because the regular Binance you can't use. So Binance US, uh, Coinbase Pro, what I personally use which for, for new people I don't recommend yet, is Bybit, and it's a leverage trading platform. So I trade with leverage, but you don't want to trade with leverage when you first start. All leverage does is amplifies what you're already doing. So if you're a losing trader, it's gonna make you a bigger losing trader. If you're a winning trader, it makes you a bigger winning trader. You know what I mean? So you don't want to use leverage until you're ready, until you're consistent. So I'm gonna end it with that, guys. I thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That was our first official workshop that we did live. Hopefully I can catch you guys at our next workshop. We will definitely let you know when that happens. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. If you guys have any questions about anything that I went over on the video, drop it in the comments. I'm always happy to answer them for you. As always, thank you. I'll see you on the next one. Peace and love.